All right, Brandon Clayton here, the Algebra Guide. Thanks for tuning in again. As you see on your screen, the subject for today, arithmetic and geometric sequences. What are they all about? How do you solve problems with them in it? Let's jump right into it. So today we have two ticks we wanna cover. Um, identify terms of arithmetic and geometric sequences when the sequences are given in function form using recursive processes and write a formula for the nth term. So we wanna be able to write that formula if, we get, if we're given a sequence. So let's jump straight into it. So first I wanna start out with what is a sequence? Oh, then I wanna talk about what an arithmetic sequence is and then we'll talk about a geometric sequence. All right, so here we go. Let's look at this function, f of x equals two x and evaluate it just for the counting numbers. What do I mean by counting numbers? I mean just like one, two, three, four. So just evaluate it for the counting numbers. And, and just to remind you, evaluate it, I'm just simply saying plug in these values for x. So that'd be, that'd be two times one, which would give you two. Two times two, which would give you four. Two times three, which would give you six. Because all we're doing is placing this x with these x values. So you see, we'll get those numbers there. So what does that have to do with arithmetic sequences or sequence in general? Well, this is a sequence. A sequence is anytime you get a set of numbers when you're using the domain of counting numbers. So notice our domain is one, two, three, four, five. They're just regular counting numbers. It can be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. But you don't want to include uh, negative numbers or decimals. Um, we're just going to use these positive uh, integers, these counting numbers. So while a sequence is a function, we do not write it this way, f of x equals 2x. So you're going to see a little bit different notation now um, than you're used to seeing for sequences. Now you're going to see a sub n equals 2n. So instead of f of x, we're going to say a sub n. What are we trying to say? We're trying to say we're representing a sequence. This is not a function. What is the difference between those two? The main difference is we are no longer representing the domain as all real numbers. We're representing it as all counting numbers. Now, why is that a difference? So let me share with you just real quick. If I were to draw a graph of what this looked like, here's what we'll be looking at. So if, here's, I'm just sketching out a graph real quick. So I put this here. So if I had this graph and I try to draw, let's say 2x. So 2x goes to the origin. I'm just gonna go draw a straight line going up. There's 2x. But this does not represent the, the uh, sequence. Why? Because sequence only represents the counting number. So that means that if I were to draw this graph again, it'll still be a line that's straight. However, what's gonna be different? Can you guess? It'll be dotted lines going here because I'm only looking at the number, the, the values for one, two, three, and so forth. So these are some vocabulary words come up here. This will be continuous. This will make this one continuous while the other one will be discrete. So continuous, I don't think I'm spelling that right. It looks okay. And discrete, discrete. And I don't mean you as plain in discrete. No, not that discrete. We're talking about discrete, as in this type of graph where the line is a dotted. You have points for your graph because you don't represent all the terms in between like the decimals. So we keep it that way. So we're gonna represent a sub n equals two n to represent all those numbers. The a sub n is the nth term of the sequence. So let's say we wanted to know the fifth term. What number is in the fifth term? Uh, well, that's what the nth term, I'm sorry, the, the, the fifth position. The n is gonna represent what position? So for instance, if we, we had this, let's, let's use this numbers here. I'll ask what number is in the third position? So you can just count one, two, three, and right here in your third position, you have a six, so you'll say six is in my third position. Determine the nth position, we're gonna, where n is, is the value of the domain. So we'll say in our third position, we have a six. Six would be our a sub n. In our third position, there's a six. The n itself is gonna be a three, because that's our third position, we have a six. So we'll do some practice problems to jump into um, applying what we just talked about here. So fret not. So we would have written this problem like this with an a sub n instead of the f of x, and we would have evaluated it as follows: one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and we would have got two times one is two, two times two is four, and so on. So pretty simple. So those would be our the values we get at those positions. 
All right, so to find the values of a sequence, we're gonna substitute the counting numbers like we said. Let's do that for this particular one. This should be A sub N, by the way. Um, should have corrected that, I'm gonna correct that now. It should be A sub N, not a huge deal, because I know you know what I'm talking about. So if I were to evaluate this for the first five terms, what is that gonna look like? Well, all I'm gonna do is take the first counting numbers, right? One, two, three, four, five, and place one in, then two, then three, and this is supposed to be four. So this has got flipped. This is, let me rewrite this whole thing. A sub n equals four times n. Not, that shouldn't be a sub n, that should just be four times n. And so we're gonna place this n with a one, then a two, then a three, then a four. And we're gonna do that for all one, two, three, four, five and get an answers for them. So here's what it looks like. And you can do that in your head, right? So four times one is one. Um, four times one is four, four minus three is uh, one. If I put a two there in place of this n, it'd be four times two is eight, eight minus three is five. If I put a three there, four times three is 12, 12 minus three is nine. And lastly, four times four is 16, 16 minus three is 13. Um, I'm sorry, not last, we need one more for our fifth. Four times five is 20, 20 minus three is 17. So those are my terms, one, five, nine, 13, and 17. So that's all we're doing. We're finding out what the values are at that, those particular positions. So that brings us to arithmetic sequence. What is arithmetic sequence? Really simple. Uh, I'm gonna sum this up real quick. Arithmetic sequence is when you have a sequence that is separated by simply adding a, a difference or you, you're adding some term, you're adding some number, or you're subtracting some number. For instance, look at this sequence here. 7, 10, 13, 16, 19, 22. What are they adding each time between each term? Well, it's just adding three. Since that number stays the same, we're gonna say this is a arithmetic sequence because they're adding three each time. So anytime you can add the same thing each time, it's gonna be arithmetic sequence. But also, Anytime you can subtract the same thing each time, minus four, minus four, minus four each time, you're gonna say this is an arithmetic sequence. Now the notation that I want you to become familiar with is this. A sub n is, is telling us that's the value at that position. A sub n minus one is saying, we're gonna subtract whatever that was before. So let's say we have 10, let's say if we're looking at these two, seven and 10, we have a 10, and then it's gonna say, subtract whatever there was before. So n minus one, your, your current position, well, let's say that's uh, two. Two minus one is one, so that'd be a sub one. So this first position is seven. So all this is saying, is a, a sub n minus one is saying, take the previous position. Um, so you're gonna see that again on the star test. Uh, and we'll cover that um, at the end during a star question. So that's what arithmetic sequence is, simply enough, is when you're constantly adding some number or subtracting some number. All right, let's determine which of these are arithmetic sequences. So I will pause it here and just quickly glance over these and say yes or no, whether arithmetic sequence or not. So let's go ahead and examine those. So if I looked at each one, nine minus five is four, so I'm adding four here. 13 minus three is four, so I'm adding another four. 17 minus three is four. So it looks like it's adding four each time. I'm gonna say yes, this is arithmetic sequence. Let's go here. Nine minus four is five. 12 minus nine is three. Three, hold on. 17 minus 12 is five. What's going on here? It's alternating five, three, five. That's not what we talked about. It has to stay the same. This is not an arithmetic sequence. What about here? We're subtracting seven. Let me use a different color. So we're subtracting seven here. And we went down seven again, and down seven, down seven, and down seven. This will qualify for an arithmetic sequence. So it's that simple. Now let's do this one. Let's write the first five terms of the sequence where the first term is five and the common difference is D equals six. So D is gonna stand for our common difference. Write out the term, first five terms, if you would, pause it here and try to write the first four, five terms yourself. 
All right, so we're gonna first start with our first term, which is five. And we know our common difference is negative six or a minus six. So each time, what are we doing? We're subtracting six. So our next term is gonna be five minus six, which is gonna give me a negative one. I'm gonna take away six again to give me a negative seven. Another six will give me a negative 13. And another six will give me a negative 19. I think those are five, yep. So that's what yours should have looked like. Congratulations if that's what you got. All right, let's go to uh, some more practice here. What if we want to find the actual formula given a sequence? Well, let's break down this formula because this is very important when you're giving a, 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 a sequence to find out what that a term is at a particular position or to find out what the first term is. So let's talk about this. A sub n stands for the value of that term in that position. A sub one means your first term and n is the position, like the first position, second position, and d is your common difference. So let's practice one where we can show how this is be very important to use. Find the 15th term, the 15th term, let me highlight that, 15th term, so which letter does this represent? So 15th term, we wanna know what position, that's the n of a sequence where the first term, which one represents first term? Well, that's a sub one, is the first term is three, so now we know our a sub one is three, and the common difference is representing by our d. So find the 15th term, so what we're looking for is the a sub n. What number is at the 15th place? So let's just plug it in and find out. So all we're gonna do is do exactly what it says. Find the 15th term. So we want a sub 15, the 15th term. We want the n to be 15. We use this formula, a sub one is gonna be three. That's the first term and d is gonna be six. And we're gonna just plug those numbers in just as they said to. There's our 15 here. Our three for our a sub one, our 15 and minus one and our six for d. Now we're just gonna multiply here. Uh, first we're gonna subtract using PEMDAS, 15 minus one is 14, 14 times six. 14 times six is gonna give us, what is that gonna be? Um, 84, yeah, 84 plus that three is 87. So now we know a sub 15 is gonna be 87. So that number, if you keep going, see without us having to do all the work of saying, um, you would have to count up, right? You would have to start with your three and add six each time, go to nine. And uh, was that six? So 15. And you'll have to count all the way up to the 15th term. But man, it's so nice if you can just apply this formula and be done with it. So that's what we did. All right, next problem. Let's practice this one. Find the 12th term of a, a, a sequence where the seventh term is 10 and the common difference is negative two, given the formula of the general term. So we got a couple of steps here. Find the 12th term where the seventh term is 10 and the common difference is negative two. So let's start by first finding our first term. So find our first term, use the formula that they gave you. Um, a sub seven, we know that the seven term is 10. We know that the position is seven and we know our difference is negative two. So we're just gonna plug that in here. 10, um, a sub one, we're looking for seven position and our D is negative two. So when we multiply these, we get seven minus one is six. Six times negative two is negative 12. And we're gonna add 12 on both sides to get a sub one is 22. So now we know what a sub one is we can go ahead and plug that in to find out what the 12th term is. So find the 12th term, we want a sub 12 here. We're gonna take our 22, which is we know our first term, and our n is our position we're looking for, the 12th term minus one times a negative two. Now this is just a simple math problem. You're just gonna work this out to find out what is the number in the 12th position. So when we do that, 12 minus one is 11. 11 times negative two is negative 22. Negative 22 plus 22 is zero. So the 12th term of the sequence is actually zero. If we wanted to know what the formula is that we're using, all we did was do a sub n equals negative two n plus 24. So we just did 
22 was our a sub 1, n minus 1 times the difference of negative 2. So if we simplify that sum, we end up getting what we just what we just showed there. Um, let me go back there. Negative 2n plus 24. So now you normally are not required to do that many steps, especially with multiple choice, um, but you can do it. The important thing I want to highlight here is know the different parts of this general term, this general formula here, so that you can apply what you need to as necessary. So, all right, let's jump to geometric sequences um, so we can bring this in for a close as before we get to our actual uh, star questions. Um, geometric sequences, um, this is a situation where you multiply now, instead of adding the same thing, you're multiplying by the same number. Look at this sequence, 4, 12, 36, 108. All they're doing is multiplying by three each time. And the, the way that it's talked about is that you have a common ratio. So you can think about it that you're multiplying something, but another way you can look at it is you have a common ratio. This is, and by that they're saying, you're taking this number, 12, divided by four is gonna be three. 36 divided by 12 is three. 108 divided by 36 is three. Those are ratios, and since you're getting a ratio of the same thing each time, that's geometric sequence. Same thing here, four over eight is one half, two over four is one half, one over two is one half, so you can divide all these and still get a half. That's really all geometric sequences are about. All right, let's practice a little bit. Which one of these are geometric sequences? In other words, which of them have a common ratio? Pause it here and check it off what, you're, what you think. Which ones are yes and which ones are no? Well, if we look at it, we have eight over four, and that should be equal to 16 over eight, which should also be equal to 32, over 16, and it looks like so far they're all equal. Eight over four is two, 16 over eight is two, 32 over 16 is two, they're all being multiplied by two. So we're gonna check that off to say, yep, geometric sequence. What about this one here? Six over negative two, is that equal to our next one, negative 12 over six? Well, six over negative two is negative three, negative 12 over six is a negative two. So already I know these aren't equal. This is not a geometric sequence. Nine over 27, that gives us one third. Nine over, I'm just gonna go ahead and simplify. I'll write it, nine over 27. Nine over 27 gives us one third because you can divide the top and bottom by nine, one third. Three over nine reduces to one third. One over three reduces to one third. One third over one reduces one third because Anything divided by one is one third, and it's going to keep going that way. So really, you're multiplying all these by one third. So the ratio is, yes, the same. So this is a geometric sequence. All right, let's try a problem. Write the first five terms of this sequence where the first term is three and the common ratio is negative two. So the first term is, what did it say? First term is three. So my, I'm gonna just start off with a three. And everything else, my other terms can be found by applying this ratio, r equals negative two. All right, so let's look at that. So the first one's gonna be a three because that's what we're starting off with. And then we're gonna multiply by negative two. That gives us a negative six. We're gonna multiply that negative six by negative two, gives us a 12. We're gonna multiply that 12 by negative two, and you can kind of see the pattern, right? So we're just multiplying each one by negative two. Those are our, our five terms. Three, negative six, 12, negative 24, and 48. Let's jump to a couple of star questions. How was this presented on the star test? Well, that's state test. So here you have um, a question, a sequence can be generated by using a sub n equals four times a sub n minus one, where a sub one equals six and n is a whole number greater than one. What are the four, first four terms in the sequence? All right, so look, I know that sounds like some weird jargon, but just calm down, take a deep breath, and remember what we talked about. Let's break down each part. What do we know for sure? So what do we remember? We know, let me get a different color, yeah. So we're gonna start with a sub one is six. And so we look at our answers and it doesn't help us a lot, right? Cause they all start with six. They're like, well, we give you that much. But what can we deduce for the next ones? Well, we know that 
we need to multiply by four, whatever the previous one is. And so to get this next answer, to get our a sub n, the next one, let's, say, let's write it this way. To get our next one, we need to multiply by four. So that's what this is telling me. So the hardest part was just trying to read that jargon. That looks very complicated. And what are they talking about? But they're just saying multiply by four each time. So that's gonna give me 24, obviously. And now my answer choice has become really easy because I know it can't be this, this, and this. And this is uh, this is adding by four. Nope, they're multiplying four times that whole thing. So it becomes easy to see that it's F. All right, so let's look at our last question from the star test. In a sequence of numbers, a sub three is zero, a sub four is six, a sub five is 12, a sub six is 18, a sub seven is 24. So if we were to write all those out, here's what it looks like. We got a zero, six, 12, 18, and 24. Now what kind of uh, sequence do you think this is? Well, they're adding by six each time, right? So this is a arithmetic sequence. So I know that I can use this, this formula setup where a sub n is gonna be equal to a sub one plus n minus one times the common difference. So I'm gonna remember that and keep that in play, but let's figure out what is the formula for this. Now, here's a quick way to do this, to be honest with you. If you got a sequence of numbers like this, you can think of it as slope intercept form since we've already talked about that because it's going up six each time. So if since they have it in slope intercept form, I can think of it that's what, this way, that is every one step is going up six. So I'm gonna look for that six and here it is right here. But I'm actually show you the steps and how to work that. And obviously that's the only one, so it's gonna be C. But I'm gonna show you how to work that if you did see that right off the bat or if they didn't have it in that form. So first of all, I need my A sub one, but they didn't give it to me. How am I gonna find A sub one? Well, I actually can plug in, I could pick a point and plug everything in and solve for it. So I'm going to do that. Let me see if I can squeeze that in here. Um, we're gonna leave A sub one as it is. And I'm gonna pick, let's say, uh, let's say 12. And then we'll say six. We're gonna pick this point here, or this uh, position, this term. And we're gonna say, we know that position is four, four minus one. We know that the common difference is six. And we know we should get an answer of six. So don't confuse that, the difference in that answer because the, 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 the value at this fourth position is six as well. So that leaves us with three, four minus one is three, three times six is 18 a sub one equals six. To find a sub one, we're gonna subtract 18 on both sides. Subtracting 18 on both sides will leave us a sub one that's equal to a negative 12. Now that I know what my a sub one is, I can start over again to write my formula to get any of the positions. a sub n is still gonna be equal to 12 or negative 12, because so I'm putting in for a sub one plus my any position minus one times my common difference. So let's work this out. So we got uh, negative 12. If we distribute this six, we get a negative six n minus six. We can combine like terms here with a negative 12 and a negative six to give us a negative 18. Actually, I wanna write it in the right order. I'm gonna keep that that uh, variable piece first, like just like they did, negative six n. Oh, okay, I see where I made my mistake. I was trying to figure out where that was. Six times n is a positive six. I made that a negative. So that should go there. Let me erase that negative off of here. Now, there we go. That feels a lot better. So yeah, watch out for those little mistakes. And I, I'm gonna keep that in there so you can see that does happen. Please be careful of that. So that's a negative six, this is a positive six. So that's why I get six n minus 18. As you can see, our answer is. And that does it. So we covered both of those. We talked about using the formula, how to write a formula that we just did, and how to identify the terms of an arithmetic and geometric sequence. Guys, thanks for tuning in. My name is Brandon Clayton, the Algebra Guy, and I will see you next lesson.